most of the 3D printing that I do are custom pieces that aren't really worth showing on camera. Until now. Here are five times that practical 3D prints saved the day. If you know how to design your own parts and you own a 3D printer, you should be quite formidable in being able to solve problems that pop up in life. In fact, a 3D printer can save you money and reduce waste as you'll see in this video. Here are five times that I was bailed out by simple, practical 3D prints. And we're going to start with the simplest of all. When our house was built, it seems a lot of things were rushed at the end. Check out the quality of this painting job. I think they were trying to save money too, as this lock and handle set is very cheap and nasty. It's got a pin that you push in to lock the door, and somehow when the door is closed, it seems to be able to lock itself. This didn't happen every time, but it happened enough that the kids were being locked out of their bedrooms, and I had to teach them how to use a piece of Lego to push the pin through the hole and get back in. Replacing all the handles is a big deal, but all I really needed was a way to stop that pin from going in by accident. So I got out the calipers and took a range of measurements. I also used this thickness gauge, which I'll link in the description. It's super handy for measuring the gaps where the calipers just won't fit. This allowed me to jump into Onshape and model the relevant components. I could then sketch a simple shape that was closely matched to the locking pin, extruding it upwards and then adding a second sketch and second extrusion. And that's all that was required to come up with a solution to address this problem. Something this small is only a 5 minute print, and the quality of the print isn't particularly important either. It slips underneath the pin, and is dimensioned, so it just squeezes over the widest part, and then stays in place. As you can see, the pin now can't be pushed inwards to lock the door. However, if someone does need to lock the door for privacy, it only takes a second or so to remove the clip and push the pin back in. But those are rare occasions, most of the time we leave the pin out, the clip in place and nobody gets locked out of their rooms. Maybe one day we'll go through the house and upgrade all of the handles, but until then I'm calling this one fixed. This next one is about the storage of this old beaten up laptop. When I started the channel I did all of my editing on this, these days I just use it for zoom calls and to run light burn to connect to my laser cutter. The battery is in average condition so the laptop needs to remain permanently plugged in. I use this on average once a week, so I need it nearby, but I don't want it in the way. I previously made a video about the design and laser cutting of all of these storage drawers. Each of these drawers holds different components for 3D printers, and I guess I could slip it into one of those. It's a little bit awkward to fit it, and the cord would need to be hanging out the whole time, so it's less than ideal. All of my studio furniture is based on this same modular system. So rather than encroach on my drawers, I could use this panel on the side as a mounting point especially when there's a power board mounted right next to it to connect the charger to. So again, I took some overall dimensions, and this one doesn't need to be quite as accurate. Therefore, in this case, a tape measure was perfectly sufficient. It was also important to double check the thickness of the panel that I would be mounting to. A single sketch was all that was needed for this design, and I bet it looks way more complicated than it actually was. From that one sketch came a base extrusion that set the overall outline, and then a second profile was extruded much thicker to create the channel where the laptop would sit. Add some fillets to tidy things up, and then mirror the finished part to create a duplicate for the other end. This looks way too narrow, but it's not designed to sit like this. To cut down on plastic, the width required was created by putting threaded rod between the two ends. And once again, these aren't the best looking prints. From memory, I had just switched slices, and I really didn't have the profile dialed in for this printer. But when it comes to practical printing, things like that really don't matter. With the central nuts and washers in place, the rod now pushes through the openings in each end, and then a locking nut caps things off. This is tightened first to sit flush with the end of the rod, and then the central nuts are tightened back against the printed part to hold everything at the correct width. The result is a surprisingly robust design, with the laptop simply slotting in, secured nicely by the two printed ends. In terms of installation, instead of trying to match up those mounting holes, it simply hooks and hangs over the top. Whenever I need the laptop, I can grab it instantly, putting it away is just as easy, and that large cutout down in the corner allows the charger to go in and saved a little bit of plastic too. A simple, practical solution. Sometimes 3D printing can even save you from yourself after a careless purchasing error. 
There was only one set of drawers built into my son's wardrobe and that wasn't enough. We improvised by using baskets as makeshift drawers, but there was unused space elsewhere as he couldn't reach the top racks and a vacant area underneath that. Piece of cake, we'll buy some sort of lightweight drawers that fit inside the wardrobe. And of course the preparation for this was measuring how much depth was available inside. So we went shopping and got this simple and inexpensive wire basket drawer. It would be a perfect fit. Well, at least that's what I thought, but as I tried to put it in, it seemed that everything was not quite right. Clearly, this item of furniture was sticking out too much and fouling on the door, meaning it couldn't close. I looked inside the wardrobe and saw how stupid I had been. I had measured from the back of the door to the back of the wall, but instead I should have measured from the back of the door to the base of the skirting board. Because of this, my measurement was out by 18 millimeters. We didn't want this clogging up the room, but it's brand new so we didn't want to buy a different one either. At the base were these M5 threads for these adjustable feet, so maybe I could print something to lift the drawers up above the skirting board. And this is what I came up with. It looks completely weird, so maybe it's best to explain how it works as we install it. The big bulky pieces are extensions for the front legs. They're mounted to the base using an M5 bolt into the existing screw thread. And as you can see, that angular cutout is simply to provide clearance for the Allen key. At the back of the drawers, nothing actually attaches to the unit. All we need to do is screw the existing foot the whole way in. And that's because it's going to slot into the low profile piece that's screwed into the top of the skirting board and sits right back flush against the back wall. And obviously there's two of these spaced to match the width of the drawers. Step one is putting the whole set of drawers roughly into position. Step two is making sure the rear feet lock into the slots provided from the printed part. As you can see, this should prevent the whole thing coming forward and hitting the door. Step three is to try and close the door and be immensely satisfied that the problem has now been fixed. The front foot also had a cutout to prevent it from fouling from the metal fitting, but that wasn't a problem. Ultimately, the situation was saved thanks to a simple practical 3D print. The last two were situated out in the yard and they're to address two career troublemakers. You might remember from previous videos, our miniature goats, Brett and Jermaine. Well, they are completely grown up now and as entertaining as ever. The added size makes them even harder to wrestle away from places they're not meant to be, but it's not all bad as Jermaine has trained himself up and now offers a sweat removal service for those hot summer days. Previously, I made this video on automating my backyard using 3D printing for a range of projects, including this automated goat pellet feeder. It runs on a schedule to feed them pellets through the day, and this fortunately completely eliminated early morning bleeding. The repeated wrestling over food has destroyed their house, with several panels knocked out and the whole thing starting to split in half. Oh, and they're also good at chewing those camera cables. That warranted a new goat house, and as you can see here, I converted a garbage bin storage container, the largest I could find, into a goat kennel. Whereas before I had to crawl through to fix any of the wiring, this thing completely opens up. That made running all of the wiring an absolute piece of cake, and when it comes time to clean, I simply open the front doors and I can easily sweep out any mess. They also demolished their hay feeder, so I had to build this much sturdier version. It's easily strong enough for them to put their full weight on, and best of all, anything that they dribble out the front falls into this basket, which I can reuse by putting it straight back into the top. So I had invested a lot of time and energy in upgrading the system, but there was still one major threat that was ruining the whole thing. That green tray that all of the pellets fell into was very convenient for the goats. It was also far too convenient for some nighttime visitors in the form of rats. Recently, we lost both of our dogs on the same day from a snake. So we had to do everything we could to eliminate rodents and therefore food for the snakes from our property. We needed a food container that could be sealed at night and my local store sold one of these which I picked up. It's got a foot pedal on the front and when they're finished the lid comes down meaning rodents no longer have access to the food. There was room for it where the old container was but I would need some 3D printed modification. So I headed back into Onshape and I designed this simple chute. Its job is to guide the pellets from the output of the feeder into the top of the new flip up metal feeder that sits on the ground. This slip on top goes through the opening in the automatic feeder. I could then drill and bolt this down to the metal lid before cutting out a matching hole on the inside for the pellets to pass through. And I'm pleased to say this has worked perfectly. The pellets have a clear path to fall down into the lower tray. The top of the chute seals nicely against the pellet dispenser and the whole lower section is bolted to the wall so the goats can't move it out of place. 
I even found that I could unbolt the foot pedal because the goats would simply put their nose under the front and lift up the lid. They still headbutt and barge each other to get to the food first, but the new system is so much stronger than before. Most importantly, the rats can no longer get to the pellets and they're slowly losing interest in this area. They're still exploring around for other sources of food, but where we used to see five at a time, now we only see one or two and sometimes none at all. Of course, that's not the end of the goat mischief, as they worked out how to unscrew the lids to the chicken feeders. And once they'd done this, they were quite aggressive in mounting the feeders and trying to get to the food. Fixing the lids was relatively easy. I simply drilled a hole through, cut a thread, and then inserted this locking piece that would need to be removed before anything could come undone. However, there was already quite a lot of damage to the chicken feeders. They have these mounting tabs on the back that I had made brackets for, but all of that mounting from the goats had snapped several of them off. These feeders work quite well when they're not being wrestled by goats, but at $65 each, I wasn't willing to throw away what was working otherwise because of the snapped mounting tabs. So once again, back into CAD for a 3D printed solution. The square cutout is for the aluminium posts that hold everything up, and I've put a hole in the back so I can screw in and stop them sliding up and down. And then the rest is designed to go around and then clamp shut on the body of the chicken feeders. We've got clearance for a bolt head on one side and room for a trapped nut on the other. And here is one of the printed parts. As you can see, it's got plenty of flex. And if we test the fit on some spare extrusion, after a little bit of wiggling, the clearance is a spot on and it slides right in. I can also test the fitment of the clamp side on a feeder that was retired long ago from a goat related incident. Here's everything in position, and as we can see, the whole thing is designed to slide back and forth before the bolt goes in to secure its final height. So now to move the clamps to the actual feeder outside, the one the goats most recently broke. So far so good, but any of these backyard designs don't pass the test until they've spent some time under scrutiny from Brett and Jermaine. If they survive, I'll print three more sets to convert the other ones. One bonus item, my daughter had an assignment for school where she needed to create a bushfire diorama. We searched and found this ruined house by Jeremy Connaughton. Once printed, my daughter gave it a mix of grey and black spray paint to make it look charred. Considering she left this pretty late, I think the end result looks pretty good, thanks in part to a deadline beating 3D print. If you already have a 3D printer but you don't know CAD, I hope what you've seen in this video is an incentive to learn step by step. I have a playlist that covers all of the geometry and techniques seen in these prints, so click the card or see the link in the description. Let me know in the comments your favourite non-glamorous practical print that got you off the hook. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy practical 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.